hearing from Brian Barnes with Cortex Services. He is the Director of Solution Architects, as well as Greg Disher from UNIF. He is one of our Solution Architects. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started here. This webinar is going to be recorded. Everyone who is registered, um, attending and not attending will receive a copy of this afterwards. Um, for anyone who wants to re-listen to it or share with any coworkers, it will be available shortly after the webinar. And um, in terms of questions, we have both chat windows and question windows. Please feel free to send questions our way. We enjoy having this be an interactive session. I will be monitoring those questions throughout our webinar here and interrupting Brian and Greg as we go. So please feel free to send those our way. We'd be very excited to get them. And with that, I think that's all I had. I will go ahead and pass it off to Brian. Great. Thanks, everyone, and, and good afternoon. My name is uh, Brian Barnes. Um, we're going to just do an intro from a Cortec perspective to let you know who Cortec is and our success using Unidesk across our project landscape and all the technologies we integrate with. Again, my name is Brian Barnes. Uh, I am the Director of Solutions Architecture here at Cortex Services. Um, we are a, a company and a technology-focused company uh, specializing in healthcare and enterprise uh, large-scale projects and uh, build a lot of our reputation around the successful implementation of technology across that, those projects. Um, I have been invited to a lot of different speaking engagements over the last few years and really have found that niche and focus into the healthcare space um, from all that might be familiar across the HIMSS landscape. I'm also speaking at CIO summits uh, and have spoken at uh, Improvada HealthCon in the past as well. Next slide. So like I, like I mentioned, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Uh, we've been around since 2005 and, and really founded on, a, on an idea that uh, we wanted to get into the professional services engagement business and really drive success through uh, end user satisfaction and customer uh, success of their projects. Um, we have um, about 110 employees across the U.S and have a national presence in that landscape. And, um, but what makes us unique is 85% of the staff is uh, from a, a, the delivery services team. We've won a lot of different awards and uh, hold many partnerships. And at the forefront of that is, is of course, Unidesk, as well as a, uh, AppSense and Nutanix. We also are get engaged heavily into um, a Microsoft CSP or cloud solution provider. Um, partnership that's been very successful for us as well as an SPLA partner. Next slide. Of those partnerships, we actually win, uh, have won many awards. Uh, Citrix Central Partner of the Year as well as AppSense Central Partner of the Year uh, for large-scale implementation. We are a, a preferred Nutanix partner and, and do Nutanix projects and installations for Nutanix across the country. So we have deep expertise across that entire virtualization stack uh, and especially when it comes to end user virtualization and uh, VDI where we'll, we'll kind of dig in and talk how Unidesk uh, makes those projects successful. Next slide. Um, we've deployed about 400,000 virtual desktop seats nationally um, around the healthcare and enterprise space. Um, we kind of build in the capability around VDI delivery but also use um, a presented desktop or a, an RDSH workload for those users and user subsets to drive costs down. Uh, and so that VDI initiative across the country has really been successful around the clinician-physician landscape as well as our enterprise and manufacturing customers for that uh, very streamlined uh, virtual desktop experience, any device, uh, any location type of methodology. The blue dots on the map represent um, our production deployments or our current customers and the red dots focus in on our Cortec resources and where they're stationed. Next slide. So what makes Cortec a little unique is that we do focus on the end user first and when our projects kind of gear up, uh, we always pay special attention to the product that's being positioned in front of the end user or the customer side. Um, a lot of these projects as they're initiated drive the IT spend through an IT initiative and what we have noticed in the past, the end user experience usually is last when it comes to prioritization. Uh, we kind of flip that around and really drive the end user experience first. Um, and we see as that is the main moniker of success for our projects. And as we drive into the user experience, that's where all the efficiency and IT gains come in. 
Um, and really when it comes from a healthcare perspective in that roaming desktop, it's all about giving time back to the physicians and clinicians, as well as other use cases like manufacturing or any um, uh, uh, customer or user that drives to many endpoints or many different locations. Um, when you make technology invisible to that end user, uh, you tend to be able to be more productive and see more patients or uh, do more productive work through that period. Um, a lot of the engagement of that process of uh, giving time back to the end user to facilitate a lot of their workflow. And I think that both benefits the, the end user as well as the company at hand. Next slide. So Cortex Services um, uh, really does a, um, uh, spends a lot of time in the R&D space really melding different solution sets together. And as you can see on the right, Unidesk is kind of the pedestal that we built a lot of these technologies around. Uh, from a proficiency perspective, starting at the top, um, obviously there's a lot of different endpoint, type, endpoint types that come in and leveraging um, thin clients or zero clients in that space, driving into that virtualization capability is really one of the biggest benefits of this technology from an end user and an IT perspective. Um, and as we drive down through the stack, obviously um, supporting from a Unidesk perspective, both VMware and Citrix and uh, native Microsoft capabilities, and then um, building an application layer around Unidesk, as well as the driving in the other data center centric technologies um, from a hypervisor perspective and down through the server and storage line. So really what we do is we, we kind of support uh, uh, agnostically all our, our technology across many different hypervisors as well as technologies um, around the data center and fully focused on end user experience. Um, when we um, engage in these projects, it's always about fastest user login time and from a um, core tech perspective, spend a lot of time into that. So next slide. And I'll turn it over to you, Greg. All right. Thank right. you, Brian. It was a really good uh, good intro there. So my name is oh, a little bit about sorry, slides are backwards. A little bit about Unidesk first. Uh, we've you know like, like Craig mentioned, we've been a, a long time uh, in the in the VDI space. We started with VDI, started with VDI in in 2008 as a company. Went went for a product in about 2010. Uh, with that, we went you know. Gardner has given us a lot of good reviews, really bringing the idea of layering up, layering as an application management uh, to the forefront. As we're based in Boston, Ma Boston, Massachusetts, or just out of. I actually work from home out of Wisconsin, so please don't hold it against me. Um, but uh, we have over 1,400 customers today, uh, the entire different verticals you can think of, from healthcare to education, big corporate to you know small shops, everything. Anyone with pain, anyone with BDI or application or image management issues, we can help with that. And we've actually gotten a lot of rewards for it uh, just this year alone. Uh, between VMware, uh, one of the best of shows, and Synergy, best of best of Synergy for the new technology. So, okay. uh, my name uh, is said Greg Disher. I'm a solution architect. I've been with the company for over two years now. But uh, prior to that, it was actually kind of fun. I was a customer. My previous role was the system admin at University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. I was there I was as a unit of customer for five years. So I've been with, I've, I've known the company, I've known the product for seven plus years already. So it kind of gives me an interesting angle. I've seen both the, the end user, uh, the VDI, the sysadmin side of it, as well as the architect here, having been with the company for over two years now. So we all know that with the, the pull, and, and, and Brian made a good example for with Cortec and then the user side, what the users want. They want work from home. They want uh, being around device. They want that. From the admin side, the, the applications are under attack in the sense that you, you can't just make one image. You can't just have one delivery mechanism. The, the desire for you know, wh however they want multiple different use cases are really making it difficult to manage your environment. Centralization, virtualization makes sense. It, it helps, and we have everyone who's ever known Citrix kind of knows how Zen App and Zen Desktop really give you the flexibility. But as that, as as the diversity happens, as the app complexities happen, as different departments, different use cases come in, you get this this gold image sprawl where you know, most people today have it. You know, how many how many images, how many masters, how many PVS disks are you managing, patching, updating on a, a weekly, monthly basis, and that really equates to the complexity because you've got 
a lot of places will have a hybrid. They might have some Horizon kicking around in a really large environment. They probably have some Zen desktop. And before long, you're, you're dealing with completely different approaches. It might be different teams. Company-wide, you're spending lots of money, spending lots of uh, burning money, it feels like, as your environment scales. And it only gets worse as you go to the cloud. You're looking for, hey, we want to go to Amazon. We want to go to Azure. We want to have an off-site. And as that environment, you, you can't do it or it, it's not flexible. That's where we come in. That's where we thrive. Not everyone's going to be running a Horizon and Zen desktop, but a majority of users are going to be running some Zen app and some Zen desktop, maybe with a plan to Azure, plan to some of the new Citrix Express up in, up in the Microsoft Azure Cloud. That's where we work. That's where we thrive. One solution, one appliance, one approach can address all of those. So we've got really two ways, two big points of getting the applications, and again, that's what the goal is, getting the applications out to the users. We have our layered images, which is our way of building your operating system, building your application into layers, combining them and publishing them out as a layered image. Uh, think of it as a, a, as a VDisk, as a VHD, as a VMDK, a way to feed your PVS, feed your MCS, the same solution using today, we can tie alongside of that and use us to centrally manage your images, centrally manage your applications once. Uh, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. The other part is the elastic layers, our at login. It's our, it's our term for user assigned or group assigned applications that get mounted as login. They still run fully native. They're, they're not, there's no overhead. This is an app V. This isn't an app. We're not streaming it. The app is running fully integrated, fully compatible with that desktop, that machine, that session, but it's deployed at login based on the user groups, user permissions to allow you a, a simpler way to deploy your ad hoc, your exception applications. How we work, we have mentioned layering. Underneath, at the core, way down in the weeds, what we are is a file system, or NTFS, and registry virtualization. We are combining the personalization, the user settings, the application layers, and the operating systems, all these separate disks, all these separate files and changes into one layered image, one flat VHD or VMDK by running on the fly our, our, our ability to merge complicated parts of the application. We can do .NET, we can do .NET Fusion Keys, we can use the Windows Driver Store, we can use services, we can do drivers. Every application can be layered and packaged with us and then deployed out into a layered image like it was natively built. And this will include things like the Citrix VDA, the, the receiver, your, your antivirus clients, printer drivers, anything like that can go into a layer and we can still deploy that out into a layered image because we are running down below Windows at the file system and at the registry. So we mentioned a little bit of the, the deployment methods we have. Uh, there's the two approaches, the, the first of which being the layered image. So think of this as your VHD or your PVS VDisk as a service. Through our UI, you have a layered image. You say, hey, I want, I want Symantec, I've got Office, I have Epic sitting on Zen App, and I want that, or Zen Desktop, and I want that to go to Windows 10. That'll combine into a, a layer. With our connectors, with our platform connectors, we will actually automatically integrate that and send it right to PVS. It'll show up as a VDisk in your store, or into Citrix MCS, or in the Horizon side. If you've got your Composer, in, Instant Clones, or even Azure. All of this support, all this functionality is out today. We also have the elastic, the ability to add additional applications and overrides instead of doing it pool wide or having many silos, many app farms. You can have a more generic everyone company image and then put the exceptions, your different Adobe Pros, your different versions of browsers, your, your Java even, into an elastic layer, which is simply shared off a Windows file share. So creating these layered images, simple as going to our UI, and I actually use the analogy, it's like you're ordering a pizza. You've got all your you've got all your toppings, you've got all your applications and your images already layered. You go through our UI and say, hey, I would like to make an image for my for my EMR, for my epic pool. So I need to have server 2012. I obviously want to have Symantec on there to make it to make it secure. I'm going to include Epic. I'm going to include the printer drivers. I might include Improvada single sign-on. I might include uh, the obviously the Citrix VDA and all that out, we publish that out into an image. Once we combine that, once we merge that, our connectors will automatically upload that right to your PBS console or right to vSphere for MCS, make that an image. It's a one click and now you have that image you can build your update your collections from. 
the connector will actually take care of that for you. So that's what makes it very easy, very simple. We've got one for uh, across the hypervisor and across brokers. So we actually have recently announced our Zen, our Citrix Zen server support. So you can run Unidesk on vSphere, on Zen server, on Hyper-V, and very suddenly, uh, starting in December, will be Nutanix Acropolis. So as the Cortec mentioned, they've got a lot of a lot of Nutanix, a lot of Nutanix deployment. We're going to be right alongside that. So being able to run your environment, everything runs off of one appliance. We call it the ELM or Enterprise Layer Manager. That VM can run on any of those hypervisors and publish to any and all of them. So when you look in your environment today, typically you have multiple pools, multiple silos because of certain applications. Imagine you have your, your and even in healthcare, you're going to have your admin, you're going to have your clinician, you're going to have your IT image. Some get Epic, some don't, some need you know, Cisco VPN tools, all that. You can have as many image templates as you want, again, just by ordering those pizzas, picking and choosing your layers that you want. When you click the Unidesk, when we click Go, we will actually publish and and, and bake that pizza for you. And like jokingly say, in 20 minutes or less, it'll automatically show up into your into your collection. You can use that right alongside what you're doing today, and simplify that because you're only updating Windows once. You're only packaging. You're only capturing Epic once. Antivirus. Everything is around the theory, the mantra of single image management. As well as cross platform. We know that a lot of places are. Typically today, on, going to be on a vSphere, you're going to be on a Zen app on the vSphere, or, or largely towards that. We want to give you choice, and we want to give you flexibility. So with Unidesk, you can ha start today, run your PVS on vSphere, run your MCS on vSphere, and next year, next quarter, next renewal cycle, uh, maybe implement Microsoft Hyper-V, maybe into Citrix Zen server. Being able to do that by moving your applications without having to redo it. All the broker and platforms fixed up are kept in what we call our platform layer. So if you want to spin up a Hyper-V pilot, Hyper-V test, that's an afternoon project. You simply create a Hyper-V connector, Hyper-V platform layer, and you can reuse your same copy of Windows you have. You can reuse the same copy of Epic and Antivirus. It's no rework. And that's the core. That's the vision is that we want you to be, take, your, take your apps, take your images anywhere you want from one central console. Same thing going to Microsoft, to Azure, being able to go to the cloud, telling your boss, hey, we can go to the cloud this afternoon connect into it. We have Azure support on shipping today. Simply log in, authenticate, upload, and now push a button. You can be sending your exact same Citrix Zen app image you have up to Azure and running that as a template there. Great for DR strategy, great for hybrids, great for uh, flexibility without having to redo and restart over. Hey Greg, I actually have a question here from someone already. Um, we have someone here asking um, that they know that Citrix has AppDisk and what the difference between Unidesk layering and AppDisk layering would be. Cool, good. Uh, it actually works out really well uh, for the slide here. Thank you. So the difference between AppDisk and us is how the applications are deployed. Uh, we do it per machine, per session, per user at login. Um, AppDisk does it strictly per VM, per uh, machine catalog. So you have to do the entire, you have to do the entire pool, the entire silo for one application. It's assigned for us. It's done at login based on the credentials. So we we upload any applications you want to the Elastic Layer repository, simply a Windows file share, and then at login, based on if they're in sales, if they're not in sales, if they're in marketing, they're not in marketing. They can change that. If you want to swap on an assignment, they simply log off, log back on, they'll get the new applications without having to re reprovision, re refresh, or even re reset your collection. There's no change to the base PVS image. The other part is we can do this on the server, on the session, on your ZenApp environment, but isolated per session. So rather than having to actually apply it to every user, every session on one individual app server or to an entire, entire machine catalog or entire silo, we can do it per session. So you got two different users, two different pools, two different connections, that you're just getting slightly different lists of layers based on their security groups. And this means to you, you could have fewer pools, fewer silos, fewer collections that you have to manage, more generic, good for everyone servers, better densities, more more cost effective, but still give them their assignment, their their applications based on their permissions, their department at login. 
But then we all, the other big change is that we do two ways of deploying. So this is just elastic. This is just us versus Aptis. We can also do the layered image. So if you have something come up like a, like a, a printer driver, you've got a PDF driver, you've got your Improvata sign-on, or really any big complicated application, we can still do that as a layer image. We can capture and layer exactly the same way. Um, with, with AppDisk, if anything falls through, anything's too complicated, and ones that come to mind is uh, Microsoft OneNote with the, the print to OneNote or PDF printers, any, any driver or software like that that will not work in AppDisk, you have to put that in your image. You have to have another image, another PBS VDisk to manage. With us, you layer it exactly the same. We just we publish it out as the layered image or if it doesn't work as an elastic assigned. Good question though. Thank you. The last the, the really the last thing I want to show on is just that uh, the scale that you can go with with UNIDESC. It's not a one site, one center one one v center one scale architecture we very easily could have one central appliance managing east west locations um, off-site co-locations local in the cloud manage the application once deliver it anywhere and everywhere we do that by having everything in a, a simple cloud pod or a pooled architecture that you can replicate and zone you've got your your primary data center it's got your elm it's got your your collection servers it's got your provisioning systems you can very easily publish to another another data center as long as we have communication you can talk to any number of pbs servers as well as replicate the file share which is simply folder sharing folder redirection to allow the the secondary data center to run their own local copy we're not pulling back across the network we're not pulling back across the link same thing for the cloud where if you want to run some sessions, some users up in Azure, you don't want them to try to mount elastic layers back on your data center. We simply clone, replicate that file repository up there. Those sessions, those users will all connect with all right there within Azure Cloud to the local application. So we scale out very, very well. It's easy to back up, easy to, re to re protect and recover because everything through us is managed through one appliance. No database servers, no external web servers. Everything is held within the Enterprise Layer Manager VM, the virtual appliance, and you replicate it from there. So I think it's a good time to switch to switch to the demo. I'll actually, show you what this looks like. Is there any questions? Anything else come up, in it? Stephanie? Um, I don't have anything right now, but okay. please, everyone, don't be shy. Greg loves answering questions. <laughs> yes, please, please. I don't want this to be talking. So if you have anything you want to know about, any specifics, please feel free to send them in there, and Stephanie will interrupt me, and we'll get those answered for you. So this is the Unidesk Enterprise Layer Manager. This is actually running in my home lab, so it's just a little small test lab. You can see we have a couple different tabs. If you're familiar with our products in the past, we have an Images tab now. And this is where we have our image templates, our image definition. So I have my, my PBS for my clinical use case, running Epic. I'm running a, a server 2012 with my, you can see my platform layer is my, my Zen app, my PBS platform. I'm actually running 7.7. I'm in, in the process of doing the upgrade right now. But different use cases, different pools. I'm actually running a hybrid if I want to run RDSH or I want to run that on, on Azure RDSH. I simply create a different image template and change the applications. On the VDI side, I can have my, my staff image. I've got, I've can also, I can also run my, my base image where I have you know, Windows 7 with Adobe Reader and Chrome that I publish out. So creating a new pool, creating a new collection in a different image is simple as filling out our template and answering a couple of questions. So I want PBS for Zen Desktop. I'll put my Windows 7 icon. I obviously want to run that on top of my Windows 7 Professional. I can pick what applications I want to have on that image. Now, these are the ones that go into the into the image template, so these are the ones that are natively assigned to the machine. But I so things like 7-zip. I can also do the applications later on the Elastic assignment. I'm going to connect, publish this right to my a connector. I have my PVS, so I can go to PVS. I could also create a new one for Citrix MCS if I want to use that as well. So I'm going to send this to my PVS server. 
I want to include my PVS for Zen Desktop platform layer. This is where the VDA is. This is where the PVS uh, domain join and the target disk software is all installed. Keep that out of the OS, letting us run a hybrid. I'm actually running both Horizon and Zen Desktop. And we'll make it probably a 40 gig disk. And I will include the elastic layer. As simple as that, you decide how big the disk needs to be, whether or not you want that at login assignment. If it's maybe a healthcare, if it's a EMR where you really worried about latency, you want everything to be amazingly fast, simply don't do elastic layering. Have it log on, have Epic, have all the applications natively installed on that layered image. Then all the PBS acceleration, the RAM cache, the write acceleration, all of that carries through. You can be as blazingly fast as it needs. I've got my, my Zen desk stuff, and all I have to do here is click Publish, and then we'll actually take care, we'll combine my Windows 7 image, our Citrix software, all the application layers, and that will actually show up in, I can skip over and show up as a new VDisk in my PBS server. Just like I've done in the past. I got my collections, I got my Zen app for accounting use case, show up and I would just deploy this onto my device collections. In my lab, it'll take me about 20, 30 minutes to do, so I don't want to make everyone wait for that. Underneath, our environment is built from layers. So I've got a hybrid here between Server 2012 and Windows 7. So you can see my I'm currently actually working on my Firefox layer, and we'll come back to that in a second. But I've got a whole variety of applications. Our platform layers for any publishing environment. So I'm running a, the PBS for Zen Desktop, Zen App. I've got View Composer, View Instant clone and even view composer for server 2012 as well as hyper-v so even though my environment is natively running on vSphere I have a platform layer for all my hyper-v agent so if I wanted to publish this off as a hyper-v one I simply include this in creating a new one if I wanted to test out Zen server I would simply create a PBS for Zen server platform layer I want to run that on top of my server 2012 and I would create a new connector for Zen server. And here, simply connect to it, authenticate, and we can have, even though my appliance is running on vSphere, I could still manage and publish to my Zen server uh, cluster. Underneath, though, the most important part, we are running one copy of Windows. Patch Tuesday rolls around, I simply right-click, add a version. We'll start up what we call a packaging machine. We'll actually clone and upload the update environment for you to either your vCenter, your, your Zen Center, wherever you want to go. Same thing for Server 2012. Update it, patch it. When it's done, I come back and click Finalize. So let's actually show you what that looks like. Prior to this, I started my Firefox package. It's simply, you'll see a VM with Windows 7 Firefox, the name and the date. All I have to do is open a console, log in, Let me spell my password right. Skip the activation for the second. And run the, I go to Firefox, I just need to run the update. I think I'm going to go to from like 47 or 48 up to 49. Let's just do that. Going up to 50 then. Normally I would have downloaded this ahead of time, but I was running, I want to get to show exactly what this would look like in the webinar. So restart. And if we look now, you're now running version 50 of, of Firefox. So from here, I would do a little housekeeping, make sure that the auto updates are turned on, make sure I've got a link to the desktop. Once I'm happy with it, once I'm done with it, I simply click the shutdown for finalize. It's actually warning me that there is a restart pending, that, that, that restart that I did not do. We will not let you finalize a layer that's dirty. We don't want those changes, we want those pending tests to get baked in this layer. So it's warning me I should probably just restart. Let's do that real quick. And Greg, while you're doing that, I just had a question come in asking if you can layer multiple versions of an app if you need both. Depends if... Yes, you can. You can have multiple versions. I actually have multiple versions of Firefox. If you need it in your in your company or in your environment, if you have different departments like 45, 47, 49, different departments that need a particular version, you can absolutely do it that way. 
if you need one person to have two different versions, since we are running at the file system, we're running very, very native, we're not isolating the applications, we actually can't let you have multiple applications. It's just like on a normal machine, you can't have two versions of Firefox running on the same machine unless you use something like App V to package, package one of them, or then you'd use app or something like Zen App to run the older version on your Zen App farm and stream that into with the receiver, but run the newest, latest locally admin. So you can have multiple, you can have as many versions in your in your environment, in your layer manager here as you need for your use cases, but any one image can only have a particular version assigned to it. Awesome. Thank you, Greg. I did get a follow-up question after that one asking, does AppV work with Unidesk? It can be. So we anything that you do, and actually an interesting point, any change, any edit you're doing inside of this packaging machine that we have at the file system or registry goes into that layer. What we're doing is writing everything off to, in this case, a VMDK uh, on the Zen server and Hyper-V, it's a VHD. So if you were to external this AppV or you have an AppV pack, you have an AppV Firefox or some other application already in place and you want to use that, if you simply copy it to or install it or sequence it onto the packaging machine, yes, then you can use a UNESCO layer to deploy a Zen app, an app V wrapped package. We see that done occasionally for, again, reusing some of the work you already have or if you have a legacy app that really doesn't like working on Windows 7, doesn't work when working on Windows 10 at all, you can still use something like AppV to isolate that and wrap it and, and still use our layering solution to deploy. Good question. So the last step here, I've rebooted it up, we'll double click, finalize it, and UNESCO will actually shut that VM down. While that's happening, what I'll do is go back to my Unidesk layer manager, go to the Hyper-V, or sorry, to my Firefox layer, and simply click finalize. And I don't need any scripts for this one. I can say, I, I can even leave myself a note. 50. Um, but, and finalize. So now what's going to happen is we are actually going to go to vCenter and fetch and pull back. We're actually exporting, pulling out the changed files of that Firefox. So that's going to take probably five minutes or so for me to go to my vCenter, pull that VM into our layer manager and then it'll say deployable and finished, and I'd be ready to use that Firefox out, simply deploy or update assignments of that, of that layer to anyone. That's a good point. If I want to assign an application, let's say you know, 49 or 47 in this case, I can assign it to a, a layered image. So if I want to assign it to be natively included in any one of my Windows 7 based images, or if I want to elastically assign it, Let's just show up my employees. All I need to do is search for search my directory for an Active Directory group, or I can just go to Steve, search for a user as well, and assign it to either Steve or other Steve. Let's just send it to the other Steve. And I've assigned that layer. So now what's happening is we are going to, it's not already up there, we're going to upload Firefox from my layer to my ELM, my appliance, up to my network share, up to my Windows file share. Um, it should already be there. You can see it's done already. And then we are going to write the config that says that Steve, or other Steve in this case, every time they log into a machine running Elastic Layering or running that, they're going to get the Firefox layer assigned to them. Also, and actually my new version of Firefox is already, so now I could even update that assignment. Let's go to 49. You can see right now in my environment, my admin image is currently using 47. Do I want to go to the new one? No, let's not do that. Let's see. Oh, we see other Steve. He's currently assigned to version 47. You change that to 49 and update. And now, anytime Steve, other Steve logs in, they'll get version 49, or in this case, 50, instead of the 47 they previously had. So you can do this throughout the day. You can do this on the fly to a small set of users or eventually to a larger image for everyone without having to republish a PVS, without having to refresh or drain your collection. Throughout the day, rolling updates, rolling tests really gives you some flexibility. Same thing if you needed to roll back. Now we find there's a problem with that. Now we need to go back to 47. Let's make sure that everyone's running now. Let's pretend that I, I, I messed something up. 
and we're going to roll them back. So now as soon as they log off and log back on, look at the old tried and true version of Firefox. But that, that is UNESCO in a nutshell. I can see everything is done through our console here. Either we can connect to vCenter, we can connect to, Z, connect to Zen Server, connect to Hyper-V. But managing once, manage your images, manage your use cases, and update Windows, patch Windows once. Any questions from anyone else or anything from the anyone on the, the Cortec team or anything that they want me to, am I, am I glanced over? Um, I don't have any from our attendees here, but we definitely will hang out a little bit longer here, so please continue to not be shy. We love the questions. Otherwise, if anyone's looking to get a deeper dive and really show showing your environment, show doing a one-on-one -on -one presentation where we can do back and forth questions, please reach out to your your Cortec team. We have the uh, Brian and the whole sales team emails up here. Um, reach out to us, reach out to Cortec, and we'd be happy to set this up. A large part of what my job is is doing these one-on-one -on -one presentations and really seeing how it can fit, how it can help in your environment to make your application image management a lot easier. Yeah, and from the Cortex side, we really appreciate everyone attending, and obviously, uh, definitely we're here to help you understand all the technology integration points with Unidesk and how Unidesk can make a, a very successful addition to uh, a project portfolio and a, a specific business need. So, yes. I did just get a question come in here real quick. Um, this person is asking about when is the best time to be looking at Unidesk. I assume they mean if it's before you're starting out a project like a BDI initiative or during, um, if anyone can speak to that. Yeah, I could, I could take that one, Greg. Yeah, go ahead. Um, oh, great. Yeah, so typically what we see is, is engaging um, the validation points across your project uh, at point of initial build to pilot. Obviously, there's some value with, you know, POCing technologies in the early stages in terms of how IT integrates it, but really you learn a lot about Unidesk's capabilities as you build towards your production systems, and we can accomplish uh, proof of concepts relatively easy and somewhat remote to, you know, get Unidesk stood up from an evaluation purpose, uh, perspective with little effort, but when the rubber hits the road, building that into your pilot approach early on will help ensure project success as you move it to towards your users. users. And absolutely, I can I can only I can only echo that. There's there's never there's never a wrong time to talk to it. Obviously, from the beginning of the project, we can help plan it, and we do a lot around making maybe the the total project roll quicker, faster, simpler. It, it's so often we find going from that proof of concept, that pilot, that first image, that first collection you built out to a company-wide ramp up very quickly, the, the wheels will fall off, or you've got too many images, too many apps, too many panes, we get rid of all that. Make it very easy to stand up the test. I jokingly say we'll, we'll, we play well with others so we can run out right alongside non-disruptively what you have. Or if it's a, a net new project, design it from the beginning to allow you to really hit that, hit the rubber on the road and ramp up to speed and deployment very quickly. All right, thank you guys both for that. I think that was really helpful. Um, we'll give everyone a couple more seconds here, but if we don't have anything else, um, I believe we will end here. So thank you so much to everyone who joined us today. As I mentioned, we will be putting this recording um, out via email uh, quickly after this webinar, so keep an eye out for that and feel free to share it around. Um, we would love to get this out to more people. So thank you very much.